ask you to position the patient and pretend as though it's in that position. Everybody clear? So whether or not it's elevated one way or the other, you, you still need to position the patient anyway. Okay? So what do you do? Yes, ma'am. Um, we go Monday and the table's broken like right now. Like when can we, like Monday morning, will you give time for us to come in and look at how it actually works or something? And I'd, I'd encourage you to email me to find out if it's already fixed. If not, then I'll, I'll tell you also. <laughs> But the expectation is you need to position them correctly. And you can, you know, so, so the position is still there. So when you do postural drainage, okay, go ahead and um, do sideline facing the, the whiteboard. So if you were doing uh, postural drainage, So if you're doing postural drainage, what I'd encourage you to do is if, you're, if it is possible that you position the patient this way so that their line of fire is behind you and that you have access to the area, okay? So this is a little bit tall for me, so I'll put it down. But remember, you have your, uh, your step stool there, okay? So one of the things you'll say is, well, prior to the patient assuming the position is, you'll say, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing some, some percussion on your chest, which what it does is it will help jog your chest so that a lot of the sputum that's there, you'll be able to cough out, all right? And if they're in this position, what, I, what you can tell them is, sir, if there's anything unusual, if you feel short of breath, or if you feel dizzy or nauseated or anything, tell me and I can stop, all right? Mm -hmm. So you have access to the patient's back, okay? So this position would be very helpful, okay? Now, as you do the, the uh, percussion, don't do your elbow. It'll be very tiring, all right? So do your wrist. What you need to do is try to figure out what your rhythm is, all right? So you start off and say, okay, this would be a good start, and then you start doing your percussion. And while you're doing this, you start looking at the patient and seeing if everything's okay. Right now, um, watch. He tells you how long you need to do it. Okay, and after you've done your session of of percussion, you then do vibration. Right, vibration. You've dislodged the secretions. You want to move them centrally. Okay, so you you'd have explained to the patient that you will do percussion, and then you will vibrate their chest so that you can move the secretions centrally to where they can cough it, all right? So vibration is done during exhalation, all right? So go ahead, breathe in and out. Okay, again, in and out. Or you go, duh, 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 duh. you don't do that sound, you know what I'm saying? You, you're basically vibrating and moving it in, all right? Now, um, Again, if the patient needs to cough, make sure that you have your cough, your, your, your sputum cup or your tissues handy, either here or somewhere close by. Yes, sir. Is it important that your hands move towards the center of their body when you're in this position? In, in this position, and in, in, in the chest positions, yes. But there are positions, like I want you to sit up. High sit up. So if it were, um, go ahead, move forward this side. Okay, so if it were here, if this is the lung segment, all right? So again, you do percussion, correct? And then vibration may just be in this area. So inhale and exhale. You're not moving much, right? <laughs> inhale and exhale. <laughs> all right, so that's... How hard do you press on them? Okay, be, well, not so much slightly. Remember, especially if, if patients have a lot more adipose tissue, you're not, you're not penetrating the chest, okay? So you want to make sure that the vibration is sufficient enough that it will... Yeah, yeah so, so it's, it's, it's your call, depending on the patient and, and, and your ability to do it. Yes, ma'am. Um, with segmental breathing, the book has it by like lobes in certain segments, or do we follow the segments with postural drainage for when you no, do segmental breathing? No, treat them differently. 
Okay, so we need to memorize that one in the book specifically Correct. for for segmental, segmental breathing. breathing. Okay. Correct. Yes, sir. The book says that you want to do that for five to twenty minutes. Which one? The percussion. How, how long? Do you the the partial drainage is. Oh boy. Okay. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, let me give you the 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 pages. Usually, the, the partial drainage positions are the longest ones. Two to three minutes is for percussion, and then vibration. And then if you can do it again, two to three minutes, and then vibration. Are you talking about two to three minutes? Each one? Yes. Oh, that is in, um, I'll probably scan the page in Kissner and Colby, because what they're saying in Wachi, <laughs> if that were the case, it is impractical and unusual. Um, Okay. So, yes, sir. Let's say we get a case like that in the practical. I know you're not going to talk to us. And we can sit there and percuss that for two or three minutes. And then vibrate for two or three minutes. Well, the expectation is I don't want to hear. I will percuss you for this long. I need to see that you know how to do it. So, however long that takes is, you know, if I see that in the first 30 seconds, and after 30 seconds I say, stop, go ahead with vibration. So yeah. Correct. But if the longer it takes, the more you need to say to yourself, I may be doing this wrong, because Moreto's not letting me go. <laughs> okay? So, what you need to do is start practicing on the different positions, and then you do your vibration. Yes, sir? So that actually is talking about maintaining the position for five minutes. Correct. So, are, do you want us to have them lay in there after we get done for a certain amount of time? Yes. Usually what happens is this. You lay them first. And then sometime during that period, you start to do two to three minutes of percussion. Again, it depends on the type of secretions they have. If they have the secretions that are very tenacious, meaning it just stays there like a bat, you need to do a lot more of that. Okay? And oftentimes, like I told you before, when they, whenever respiratory therapy is there, that's the best time after respiratory therapy to do your, your chest PT. Why? Because they don't help loosen the medication, uh, the, the secretions using medications, right? And so that's when you can dislodge a lot of those. And sometimes what happens is, after you've done two to three minutes and they're still in that position for a while, you can tell them, you know, you continue to stay in this position for the next five minutes. It may be that you don't cough right now, but within the next hour, something might come up, in which case you make sure that you have your tissue handy or your sputum cup handy. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, it says to check solid. Do you want us to do that or just say that we would do it? Just say time. Um, if this is the first time you've seen the patient, then part of your assessment is you would already know the vitals, right? Um, a good practice will tell you that you check it, but our lab exam is not, you know, uh, 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 for that in, in terms of what you can do. So your assumption that. I've checked the vital signs, you know. But the, the frequent follow-up, everything okay, you know. Are you having shortness of breath? Those, those types of things are important. Yes, sir. So there's no situations where you need to check like your vitals on this practical? No. Okay. Well, let me go back. It depends on the case. I'm not telling you what the case is. I'll, I'll give you the case tomorrow. But the case would dictate what it is. Okay. Um, anything else? The cases I'll give tomorrow, and like before, what you'll be doing is look at the cases and then figure out in your minds what's the most appropriate, and then I'll come back later on that period, and um, we'll, we'll discuss technique. I'm not discussing answers to the case. If I start hearing that you're angling toward that, I'll probably have to back out and say, sorry, I can't answer that. Um, let me think, what else? What time are we meeting tomorrow, one? Uh, <laughs> What time are you ending tomorrow? 12.30. Okay, 12.30. Okay, 12.30, everybody is okay. Now, at 